Christ today, are you happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Father, right now, hallelujah, you are so wonderful. There is no place I'd rather be than in your presence right now. And I thank you, God, that you hand-selected the people that are here in this room right now. You hand-selected because you, Father God, love your children. And you, Father God, are launching them into assignments. You're launching them into favor. You're launching them into destiny. And I thank you for that right now. And God, I thank you that all things work together for good. So no matter what anybody is hearing tonight, you are perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Oh, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. That can pull me out of your love Because you are You're so perfect In all of your ways And even when my ways Are imperfect You turn it around Turn it around Turn it around Turn it around And for that we thank you God We thank you We thank you So God as we go into the word tonight As we go into your word tonight God I thank you, God, that you're opening hearts, you're opening ears, and you're revealing us your word. You're revealing to us your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, I bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Joanne Rosario Condry, and I have the honor and the privilege of being the pastor of the most amazing people in this entire world. Rain Fire Church. People that were out there in that heat. People that were out there in that, I don't know how many degrees of heat it was yesterday, and they were grilling food, and they were preparing, and they were hosting, and they were serving. They brought the whole sound system out before the camp. They brought the whole sound system back after the camp. They were in here plugging up stuff after midnight, and let me tell you, I tried to pick up a cord, and they said, okay, yeah, uh-huh, I'm going to need you to go somewhere and sit down, because you got to preach tomorrow. That's love, and I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you. Let's open our Bible tonight to Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter 11. We've been talking about spiritual fatherhood here at Rainfire Church because even though this is a concept like any other kingdom concept that is abused, there is truth in the Word of God when it comes to tithing, even though it's been abused. There's truth in the Word of God as far as giving to men and women of God. There is truth in the Word of God to ser about serving. There's truth to the Word of God about spiritual mothers and fathers. Even though people have, and I've said this before, used it and abused it to control and to manipulate people in the church. Because see, there are certain people that are pastors and leaders within the body of Christ that they don't. See, when you have authority... When you walk in the delegated authority and power of the Holy Spirit, you don't have to force anyone to follow you. You don't have to force anybody or manipulate anybody in order to stay with you or to serve under you. You can't force people out of fear or out of manipulation. That is not the Spirit of God. That's not the Spirit of God. But there is a place, a very important place for spiritual impartation. There's a very important place for uh, receiving from somebody's spirit. Because I'm here to tell you tonight that the church of Jesus Christ is not a corporation. Can I get an amen? amen. The church of Jesus Christ is not just a board and uh, deacons that are going to make the rules for the church. The church of Jesus Christ is a living, breathing organism. And the head of that church, his name is Jesus Christ. And all of us are a different part of the body. So we have those that are the arms. We have those that are the legs. We have those that are the eye. I can't say to the arm, I have no need of thee. And the foot can't say to the hand, I have no need of thee. From the most religious church to the most progressive church, we all need each other. And it's not anybody's place to judge anybody, but it's our place to love and to walk out the revelation 
revelation of who Jesus Christ is in your life based on what he has shown you. So let your life speak for you. Amen. Let the way you live speak for you. Let the love that people feel when they encounter you speak for you. Not what you say with this, but what you say with your life. What you say with your life. So there is a very important concept in spiritual impartation and in spiritual mothers and fathers that within the church has lost. Some people still use the name. I'm your spiritual daddy. I'm your spiritual mom. Call me daddy. Call me because there's a they feel like they can control people if they they build a soulish connection. Oh, you're not gonna help me tonight. But being a spiritual mother and a spiritual father is not about having a soulish connection with people. What is a soulish connection? A connection that is emotional. A connection that is it's only, you know, you tell people what they want to hear or, or you, you treat people a certain way or you don't tell them the truth when you're supposed to tell them the truth. Why? Because I don't want them to leave the church. I, don't, I, I need them to stay because I need their tithe and offering. Let me tell you something. I love you with my whole heart. I love you with my soul. I love you with my mind. I love you with my body. I, I love you with every fiber of my being. But I'm going to tell you something. Your tithe is not more important than me standing up here and telling you the truth. Thus say it the Lord. If you want to ignore the word of the Lord and take your tithe with you, I will pray for you. And, I'll, and if you ever choose to come back, I'll love you. But I will not compromise the word of Jesus Christ for no amount of money. Because I have to stand before God one day in a season and in a moment that money won't matter. And God is going to look at me and say, did you tell them what I told you to tell them? Did you correct them in love when I told you to correct them? Did you teach them what I told you to teach them? So that they could be ready for where they were going. And that's the thing with spiritual mothers and fathers. It is our responsibilities. It is our responsibility as, as the five-fold ministry of the church to love the sheep, to feed the sheep, and to prepare them for where they're going. Everybody's not going to stay with you forever. And pastor, you need to be all right with that. You got to be willing to launch people into destiny, launch people into purpose, and not be afraid that the tithe and the offering that they bring is going to leave with them. Because guess what? If you sow them into the kingdom, God will send 20 more that are more talented, more gifted, more prosperous. You hear what I'm saying? You can't get stuck in the ways of man. We got to walk according to the kingdom. Come on, somebody. We have to walk according to the kingdom of God. So this morning we were talking about Elisha and Elijah. And I will touch a little bit on that tonight. But I felt the Holy Spirit wanted me to, to, sh to establish a foundation and move forward in a foundation. Because Rainfire Church is going somewhere. Rainfire Church is going somewhere that has been ordained by God. In the same way that every other church in this city has an, they have an ordained a purpose by God. And it is up to us to make sure we stay in that purpose, that we're not trying to do our own thing. So we seek the Lord to know what that purpose is, okay? So we're going to go to numbers, and tonight I'm going to talk about moving forward in one spirit. Somebody say, moving forward in one spirit. I know that we have visitors here tonight that are a part of other churches. For those that are a part of Rainfire Church, this word will, 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 um, it will have to do with me and with you. It, it's our relationship. But wherever it is that you serve, wherever it is that God has called you, wherever it is that God has planted you and has spoken to you that you're supposed to be there, this applies to your connection with your church and your man or woman of God. Amen? So the word of God in chapter 11, in Numbers chapter 11 says this, And when the people complained, of course this is Israel, as always, complaining, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it. And his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them. And that, that were in the othermost parts of the camp, and the people cried unto Moses and said, When Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Taborah because of the fire. <coughs> Yes, okay, I want to make sure I'm in the right place. Because of the fire that was quenched, and the Lord burnt among them, and the mixed multitude that was among them felt a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? They were always complaining. They were always murmuring. They had been in slavery for how many years? Like 400 years? And finally, their time of deliverance had come. Finally, God had sent the deliverer that he had promised, and suddenly they're out here in the wilderness, and they have to get somewhere. Somebody say, get somewhere. Get somewhere. They 
have to get somewhere as a people. They had, there was a vision. There was a place that God had called them to. But everybody was pulling in their own direction. Everybody was just kind of doing their own thing. Complaining and murmuring. And, the, and the, you know, the anger of God was kindled on many different occasions. But let me tell you, when a people are in one spirit, they're able to move forward. When you're not in one spirit, you're not going to move from the spot where you are. So if Rain Fire Church is not in the same spirit... We're not going anywhere. We can't do anything if we're not in the same spirit. Remember the Tower of Babel? When they began to build the tower in the Old Testament, I think it was in Genesis, and God saw that they had one language, one mind, and they were building and building and building and building. And God said, hold up. If I don't do something about this, they are going to reach heaven. So I need to just go ahead and he just, he split their languages. He split their thoughts. He confused everybody. And suddenly everybody's speaking a different language and it brought a division so that they would not be able to progress. So the same spirit is very, very important. Very important. Verse 6. But now our soul is dried away. There's nothing at all beside this manna. Here they go complaining. Before our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed. And the color thereof as the color of bedellum. And the people went about and gathered it. Ground it in mills. Beat it in mortar. Uh, baked it in pans. Made cakes of it. The taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night. The manna fell upon it. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families. Every man in the door of his tent. And the anger you're weeping but God is providing for you in the desert yes. you know what I'm saying like they were just a mess and I, I'm not trying to judge them because I know sometimes we a mess but doggone it come on <laughs> you know pillar of cl fire by night cloud by day to keep you cool we, we could have used that cloud by day yesterday because it sure was hot <laughs> And Moses heard the people weeping, and the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. He's embarrassed. He's like, man, Lord, you allowed me to bring these people out. We got somewhere to go. You're providing for us in the midst of this desert. The clothes on our back are growing with us. You're giving us food and water in the middle of the desert. And they are still grumbling and complaining because they're tired of eating manna. Come on. You're eating something. Your belly is not empty. You're not wasting away in the desert. God help us not to be that way. And Moses said unto the Lord, verse 11, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? He had to be straight up with God. He's like, man, you took me out of Egypt. You brought me into my own desert. Then you come and you show up in this flame of fire, in the, in the burning bush. You call me back. I go through all these plagues. I have to confront my past. I have to confront Pharaoh. I got to get all these people on one accord. I got to get them out of Egypt. I mean, we're talking a million plus people. We're not talking about 20, 30, 40 people. We're talking about, I mean, multitudes of people. And he's like, Lord, where have I gone wrong that you have given me this job? Where did I mess up that I ended up dealing with these knuckleheads? And I'm sure that there are some pastors that feel that, God, how did I end up with this church? Now, thankfully, that's not my story. But please don't make it my story because we're doing good. <laughs> We're doing good. He said, why have you laid this burden on me? And the truth of the matter, that no matter how wonderful and amazing a church may be, when you're dealing with a large group of people, no matter how you look at it, to a certain extent, there is a part of it that's a burden. Because you're not just carrying your own problems. You're not just carrying your own issues, but you're carrying everybody's issues and everybody's problems. And I'm offended and my feelings were hurt. And pastor walked in and she didn't look at me. And this minister so-and-so, I didn't like what she had on. And everybody's coming to you and complaining to you. And the praise and worship team fighting it. No, not at Rainfire Church. They don't do that. You understand what I'm saying? It's a burden because it's hard to deal with a lot of different types of people. But the, the truth of the matter is that God loves the church. God loves the body of Christ and as ministers and pastors, he expects us to love the church as well. So he's saying, why have you placed this burden on me? Have I conceived all these people? Are these all my babies? Are these all my baby mamas? Have I conceived all these people? Have I begotten them that thou should say unto me, carry them in thy bosom? 
as a nursing father beareth the sucking child unto the land which thou swearest unto the, their fathers? Like, God, how did I end up with this job? How did I end up with this burden? Because the way it's looking right now is looking kind of impossible. I'm dealing with a people that are complaining. I'm dealing with a people that don't want to do right. I'm dealing with this people that are cutting the monkey, as we say, and acting a fool and complaining when you have, you know, you split the Red Sea and you drown Pharaoh and his chariots and the horses and you brought them this far. You broke them out of slavery. They were getting beat every day. The straw was taken away and their burden was made three times as hard and yet you relieve them of that. You deliver them. But here they are acting a fool. I did not have these children. They don't belong to me. So why should I have to carry them into the promised land as a mother that is nursing her child? And he didn't even say mother. He said as a father. That, and we know that in the natural a father does not nurse. But in the spirit a father nurses. That might have been a little deep for somebody, but it's okay. In the spirit of Father Nurses, why? Because there is a deposit and there is a nutrient and there is a spirit that the man of God carries. And when you're called to that man, like Elisha was called to Elijah, there is something that leaps in you when you hear the voice and you hear the word of the Lord. It says, my sheep know my voice and someone else they do not follow. It's not that you're following the man but, or the woman, but you're following the voice of Jesus Christ that is communicating through that person that calls you, that pulls on you, that when you hear their voice, you say, man, I don't know what it is, but I need to be at that church every Sunday. There's something about when I come into the house of God, every time that woman opens up her mouth, it's almost like she's reading my thoughts, like she's been in my conversations, like she's been in my closet with Jesus. When I'm asking God questions and I come to church and she's answering them. God, what is that about? It's called a spiritual connection. It's called having a mother, daughter, mother, son, father son father daughter relationship in the spirit he said do I have to nurse them has anybody here ever nursed their child good God almighty see I got some witnesses up in here I know that story you get sore you are bleeding you can't go nowhere you can't leave the house they trying to latch on every 10-15 minutes they're hungry all the time then they want to fall asleep while they're nursing and they don't get full so you put them down because they fell asleep and maybe I can go get a shower and as soon as you get up from the couch ah, oh, I almost got away and guess what can't nobody else feed the baby for you because you're nursing man he's like how did this end up being my job I don't even have these babies but I got to have them you understand what I'm saying like he was through he was done he was done carry them in thy bosom you say to me as a nursing father beareth the sucking child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers verse 13 whence should I have flesh to give unto all the people they wanted meat they were, they were mad about the manna they wanted meat okay for they weep unto me saying give us flesh that we may eat I'm not able to bear all this people alone because it's too heavy for me I'm not able to bear these people alone because it's too heavy for me and if thou deal thus with me kill me I pray thee out of hand if I have found favor in thy sight and let me not see my wretchedness Lord if this is how it's going to go down take me out Lord let's call it right now raise up another leader raise up somebody else and take me up out of here because these jokers right here listen because the burden was too much and for any ministry or any church or any family in the spirit, the person that is leading carries a very, very heavy burden. And the larger the church and the more people you deal with and the more, more you know, leaders and ministers you deal with, the heavier the burden. You multiply the people, you're multiplying problems. More people, more problems. That's why if you're starting your ministry and you got 50, look, be faithful with your 50 and praise the Lord. Because if you had 5,000, you're going to have multiplied problems. Build slowly and securely so that you can bear as a family, so you can bear the weight. What designates the height of a building? 
the foundation how far down into the ground you go you can't just decide well I'm just gonna lay a slab of concrete and I'm gonna I'm gonna build the, the largest tower in the world no I think that whatever goes down has to be twice as deep as as it is high some type of equation like that it has to go deep because it's a heavy burden to carry and Moses was like man these people are a trip and if this is what you have me doing and if this is what you think that I'm gonna be doing for the rest of my years I have a wife I have a family and I left her at home to go get these crazy people these are not my people these are your people yeah they're my second and my third cousin but they're your children but you got me nursing them and dealing with their foolishness take me out and what does the Lord say unto Moses? And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with me. Now listen, Moses. I know that what I've called you to do is heavy. I know that my people can be a little crazy, see, but son, I have a plan that goes way into the future, a plan that you cannot even see. It's a plan that's going to bring the Savior of the world onto the earth, so I need you to stay with the program. I need you to stay and stick to the laws that I've given you. I need you to preserve the seed of this people. I need you to continue to move forward. And regardless, we got to follow through with this plan because this is the way that I've made for the redemption of all of mankind. So he says, we're going to do this. Go and get 70. Get 70 elders. Is that what it says? 70 men of the elders of Israel whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them and bring them unto the tabernacle of congregation that they may stand there with me. And this is amazing. Verse 17. And I will come down. The Lord says, And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take of the Spirit which is upon thee and put it upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone and say thou unto the people sanctify yourselves against tomorrow and ye shall eat flesh for ye have wept in the ears of the Lord saying who shall give us flesh to eat for it was well with us in Egypt therefore the Lord will give you flesh to eat now let's go back to verse 17 Spiritual fatherhood and spiritual motherhood is a very, very important concept in within the body of Christ because if there is not one spirit within the body, if there is not one spirit within the congregation, if there is not one spirit among any team of people that is working together or laboring together or serving together, if there isn't one vision, there's going to be division. The Word of God says, write the vision and make it plain so that them that read it can follow it, they can run with it. It is the job of the pastor to give the vision for the local church. It's the job of the pastor, and then you have the teacher that also assists, and you have the evangelist that goes out and wins souls. Then you have the prophet that brings the word of the Lord as confirmation for the direction of the church. But then you have the apostle, who is the overseer of all of the fivefold ministry and for the churches that are that are under, I don't want to say jurisdiction because that's such a religious word, but under their care. So in the same way that I care for your soul, my apostle cares for my soul and he makes sure that I stay in line and that I'm not sinning and acting a fool and if I do he's the one to come and say come here girl you need to sit down you see what I'm saying but in in the body of believers there has to be one spirit there has to be one spirit so it's amazing to me that the Lord said to him listen you're gonna go and get these 70 people you're gonna bring them to the temple of, of congregation you're going to bring them all together and I will come to you there the Lord himself said I will come to you there but then he says something very interesting he does not say I will take of my spirit and fill those 70 men like I did with you Amen. which he's God he could have but what happens is if God would have taken of his own spirit and given it to the 70, every one of them would have had an individual plan. Every one of them would have had an individual vision. And not to say that it may have been a bad thing. It could have been an amazing vision based on whatever it is that that person's individual calling was. 
but God knew and understood there is a job that has to be done there is a moving forward that has to happen and if everybody is on their own island you're not going to get anywhere and you're going to end up dead here in the desert so Moses this is what I'm going to do because I love my people and I love you I'm going to take of your spirit I'm going to take of your spirit and place it on the 70 elders and they will help you bear the burden of the people they will help you see this is the reason why as a pastor I'm not interested in members I'm not interested in anybody coming to my church that belongs to another church unless God calls you to be here I'm not interested why because I don't want members if I'm going to do this what I want is sons and daughters what I want is people that say I want of her spirit I want to work in her vision I want to serve in her vision because the truth of the matter is is that when you receive the spirit of the person that you're assigned to when you receive the person's anointing and their power and the gift and the treasure that they walk in and you serve in that vision the season and the time will come where God will launch you into your own because you cannot be a good leader if you have not been a good follower you cannot be a good mother or a good father if you have not learned how to be a good son if you have not learned to be a good daughter you, you, you can't do it some people want everybody to submit to them but they're not willing to submit to nobody and that is not the way of the kingdom. The word of God says that the greatest is the one who serves. Everybody looks in the church to be served, but people don't run and get in line to serve. But there has to be, if a church body is truly going to move forward in the power of the kingdom of God and accomplish things that God is calling them to accomplish, there has to be one vision, there has to be one heart, and there has to be one spirit. And there has to be an understanding that if I say Rainfire Church is my church and Pastor Joanne is my pastor, then there has to be an understanding for you to really, really get everything that you need to get from my spirit, from the deposit that God has placed in me. There has to be an acknowledging and an understanding, okay, there's something that this spiritual mother carries and I'm going to nurse yes. here. Yes. I'm not going to go to every... See, you can't... A child that's nursing can't just go up to anybody and lift up their shirt and begin to nurse. See, because this, this, this don't belong to you. You have... You understand what I'm saying? And it doesn't mean that you can't receive from many people. That you can't receive from people that are in the body of Christ. But you have to be selective. And you have to know, I have to plug in and I have to connect to the spirit of God that is flowing through my pastor because we, as a family, have a work to do. And if we don't carry her spirit, then everybody's going to be pulling in a separate direction. And what happens when everybody pulls in a separate direction? Whatever it is that you're holding will rip. If you want to see the church ripped, if you want to see the church fall apart, how many churches have been destroyed by a church split? How many? Dude, for real. If you feel a call to pastor, you don't have to fish inside the church where you are. You get your stuff. You say, pastor, I feel called to go start a work. And you get yourself and go. And start whatever it is that God has called you to start. You don't have to bring division. But the problem is, is you feel like it's okay to bring division. Why? Because you're not carrying the spirit of your pastor. Because if you carry the spirit of your pastor, you don't want to harm the church. You don't want to harm the pastor. You don't want to harm the church family. So you'll say, even if you're disgruntled with that place, you'll say, I'd rather remove myself before I bring gossip and hurt. Because you carry the spirit of that pastor. We were talking this morning about Elisha and Elijah. And I hope that you have an opportunity to hear it once we put it up on the podcast. Because it was a very, very important message. It was very, very important. See, God spoke to Elijah and let him know, Elisha is next in line. And you need to be able to get him at his father's house and begin to pour into him. And if you study it, you'll see that it says, and he went and he found him at his father's house. He placed his cloak on him and he walked away. And then Elisha says, man, I need to leave what I'm doing and I need to come with you. And Elijah says, what have I done to you? Why are you trying to follow me? Why are you trying to go with me? I didn't do anything to you. But what happened was is that the anointing that was in that cloak, the anointing that was in that, it made something come alive in him where he said, 
hold up. There's something that you carry. There's something that you have on the inside that I know that I need for where I'm going. And if you study it, if you study it, it says that from there on, he left after he did the sacrifice, after he said goodbye to his family. He left with Elijah and began to minister to him and serve him. And then when the time came, he was taken up. He released the mantle. Elisha took it. He asked for a double portion. But it's only because Elijah recognized that there was a connection between him and the prophet. He recognized, wait a minute, there is something that you have and I want your spirit. See, this is the same thing that happened with Moses and the elders. They had to be able to receive. God himself was there. God could have said, I will give them my spirit. But the Lord himself said, I will take of your spirit and place it on them. I told the church this morning, it matters who your pastor is. It matters what kind of life they live when you ain't looking. It matters if they're faithful to their wife or to their husband. It matters if they choose to treat their children right. It matters if they're flirting with the girls in the lobby of the church. It matters. It matters. It matters. It matters. Why? Because you submit yourself to a spiritual ministry and you eat of their tree and you become who they are. So if you see a church where there's a whole lot of stuff going on in the church, I mean every church has their issues, let's be real. But when there is an exaggerated amount of certain types of behavior in the church, many times it's because there's a hidden sin in the leadership. And that hidden sin in the leadership is bleeding into the people and the people are receiving it without even knowing it. Because if you, you're either gonna, you're gonna either have the, the, the same spirit and, and he has the right spirit, or you're gonna have the same spirit and he has the wrong spirit. But we have to operate and move in the same spirit. And when Elijah was speaking to Elijah, he knew that the time was up. He knew that his master was about to be taken from him. And he said, look, I'm getting ready to go. What do you want? What do you ask for? And he said, I pray thee, give me a double portion of your spirit. He didn't say, give me a double portion of your anointing. He didn't say, give me a double portion. I want to do the miracles that you do. I want to. There have been so many times where people have come to me and they say, oh my God, Pastor Joanne, your ministry impacts me so much. I just want to worship like you. I want to, I want to be like you. I want to, you know, I want to sound like you. I want to be anointed like you. Will you just pray for me so that I can receive your anointing? And I understand that sentiment. I do. I understand the heart. But the truth of the matter is, is that you can't just receive someone's anointing. You have to receive their spirit. But only a son and a daughter can receive the spirit of a true man and woman of God, of a true mother and a father in the, in the faith. See, people that are not sons or daughters, they don't inherit. And the spirit and the double portion and the mantle is given to those that are sons and daughters. So he said, I want a double portion of your spirit. And when the time came and the mantle was released, he snatched up that mantle. He took it. He hit the waters. The waters split just like they did for his spiritual father. When Elijah was taken up, he said, my father, my father. Yes. Because he knew this is my spiritual father and this is the moment that I've been waiting on and I know that I'm next in line. Give me that double portion. It belongs to me because I have to continue the work. Because the flesh dies but the anointing has to stay here and continue to work. So if you're in ministry and you don't have sons and daughters and you don't impart your spirit into somebody then your ministry will die with you and your anointing will be just left floating in the spirit and nobody will grab it, nobody will grasp it and nobody will continue to run with it and if you don't have a legacy in the spirit your life has been wasted as men and women of God if all we ever do is want to be superstars and want to be the one that's on the stage and we never want to go through the trenches with nobody and we never want to disciple nobody and we never want to train anybody and we never want to sow into the lives of people and allow them those that feel called to be your sons and daughters those that feel called to be that Elijah those that say I want that double portion of what Pastor Joanne carries it's the same thing that I said when I see my spiritual father I say I want a double triple quadruple portion of what he carries. I put a demand on it and I served for it. 
and I backed up his vision and I walked in his vision and I didn't take jobs at other churches leading worship when I could have been making a nice salary and they said I'll pay your house I'll give you moving expenses all you got to do is come and lead worship a couple times a month and you'll have a six figure salary come on and I said no I can't because there's a man of God who's my spiritual father and I want his spirit and I want his impartation and I want the deposit on the inside of him and I know that I have to serve so that I can come into my own you understand what I'm saying you can't move forward if there isn't one spirit you can't move forward if you don't receive the impartation and the deposit and you don't have that connection with who your pastor is if you don't feel comfortable putting that kind of demand on your pastor because there are things that you see that you feel like are questionable then maybe you need to pray about where you are no pastor is perfect I'm not perfect I'm not perfect but every day I stay as connected as I can to the Holy Spirit because I understand the responsibility. I understand the burden. I, I understand the weight of the responsibility. And as I was saying and sharing this morning, I always want my sons and my daughters to look at my life, to look at my marriage, to look at my relationship with my husband and be proud to say, that's my mama. And to be proud and say, that's my spiritual dad. In the same way that I look at my dad who's been married to my mother for over 42 years. I think it's like 45. Same wife. They're like water and oil. They don't mix on any level. They're so different. But they're committed to God and they're committed to each other. Through the thick and through the thin, I look at that and I say, I want that for my family. I want that for my marriage. Why is it that anointed men and women of God, when they have both a strong calling of God, they can never stay married? Why is it that every time that a woman has a strong ministry and a man has a strong ministry and they both are anointed to ministry, they always end up in divorce? Because they don't know, uh-uh, that will not be my portion. My husband is a strong man of God. I am a strong woman of God. But guess what? We will figure it out. And when the Lord comes or he takes us with him, we will still be standing in the name of Jesus in the commitment that we made. Because we have a responsibility to the people. I want you to be able to feel confident, those that are part of Rain Fire Church, to be able to say when you look at my life, I want her spirit. I want this church to move forward and I want her spirit and I put a demand on her spirit so that we can all work together and we can all move forward in the vision. Do you realize that Elisha did twice as many miracles as Elijah? Do you understand that he received the double portion of what he asked for? Do you understand that he received the double portion of the spirit that was in the man of God that he saw as a spiritual father? Moses and the elders were able to work together and lead millions of people. Why? Because they were operating in the same spirit. My prayer today, my prayer today as a pastor, my prayer today as a servant of the Lord Most High is that he would continue to bring the sons and the daughters that are assigned to me and I'm assigned to them. That God would allow us to carry the same spirit. That there would be a spirit of unity among us. That there would be a spirit of love and honor and respect among us. And that we would be able to move forward in the same spirit. Because if we all have our own plan, we will not go anywhere. But if we operate in the same spirit, in the spirit of the pastor, in the spirit of the leadership, in the spirit of the covering, then we will be able to get somewhere. People do it in the natural all the time. How much more when you do it in the spirit? How much more when you do it in the spirit? And to understand that many times when you receive that spirit and you receive that impartation, it's only because God wants to launch you into what he has for you personally, but he calls you for a season to serve under a certain ministry so that you can receive that spirit. Because the truth of the matter is that it's not my spirit, even though in the word of God it is termed as, and he gave of the spirit that was on Moses. He gave a Moses spirit to the leaders. But what it is, it's the spirit of God and the deposit that he has entrusted to me that I have to share and I have to give to those that need that spiritual nutrient for where they're going. See, not every church gives out and administers the same spiritual nutrients. If you are, uh, you have a certain call of God on your life 
and spiritually you need serious vitamin D you cannot be plugged into a ministry where their forte is vitamin E why because you're even though other people are flourishing and other people are saying oh my god this is the best church ever and you are sitting there and you are feeling empty because you are not getting the nutritional need that you are requiring for your call does that make sense so there are times where people will watch and minister or they'll hear me preach and they'll say, man, I just, there's just something. I just don't even know what it is. That's what it is. It's a spiritual connection. And when you acknowledge it and when you understand it and when you say, Father, this is my house. This is my church. I believe that God has called this church to exist. Father, give me up her spirit so that we can come together and move forward as a family. Because without that, we won't get anywhere. But when we have one spirit, we'll be able to move forward. Amen? Let's close our Bibles tonight. Bow down and worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Bow down. And worship Him and tear in. Oh, enter in. Consume me. Consume me. Fire. Sweet perfume. Your tonight was very much a family word. I understand, Father God, that it is a kingdom word, and, and only those that have an ear to hear will hear what you're saying in the Spirit. I cannot worry about being misunderstood when I present your word in the purity and in the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I pray, God, that those that had an ear to hear will hear and understand I pray, Father God, that they'll be able to understand what it is that this word requires of them. If they don't feel like it requires anything of them, I love them and I bless them just the same. But for those that are called to this house, for those that are called to be my sons and daughters in the faith, God, I thank you that this word helps them to understand what is required of them. It's not a requirement that comes from me. It's not a requirement or a burden that I place on them. But it is a requirement that their own spirit will leap up within them and say, this is my house. This is where I've been called to be planted. This is where I'm called to grow. This is where I'm called to be mothered and nurtured and fed. This is the place. And so God, I thank you because that, that, that recognition is coming alive. And I thank you right now, God, that you continue to cover me, continue to purify me, God. Keep me holy. Keep me pure. Keep my eyes focused on you, that I would never drop the ball, that I would never fail your children, that I would never get in pride, that I would never get in greed, that I would never get in self, Father God. Because there's no quicker way to destroy yourself and to destroy the people that are called to you than by getting in the flesh and leading by the flesh. But I pray, God, that we would always be one spirit and that I would be able to lead by your spirit to only be a blessing to only be a blessing and to launch your sons and your daughters into their destiny and into their purpose whether it be here or whether it be abroad you know where they belong you know what they need and I thank you right now 
I thank you right now, God, that if there's anyone in this house that has never given their lives to you, if there's anybody that has never surrendered to you, I pray right now, God, that they would pray this prayer with me, that they would rededicate their lives to the Lord and say with me right now, Father God, and everybody pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that without you, I'm lost. I'm a sinner. I recognize, Jesus, that you are the only way to the Father. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Make me new. Wipe away my sins. And launch me into life more abundantly, which is only found in Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Can we say that one more time? Come to me. Come to me.